Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about um, how I go about cleaning my arrow garden harvest and um, updating my pH. So everybody kind of has their own little method that they use or what have you. I actually check my pH like a couple times a week, primarily once a week, especially in these smaller units. Um, but uh, you know, it's not necessary to do that, but I just kind of like to see how things are growing. Um, if I start seeing plant issues, I do check the pH and kind of see what's going on. But when it's time to clean, that's obviously another good time to, to just verify that things are going well. Um, oftentimes the water will adjust the pH, at least for me, I use my tap water and I've got pretty hard water. So um, that tends to kind of raise the pH anyway. But if you um, are a pH checker, you'll know that over time it starts to go downward and and you know, whenever your pH is outside of that normal range of 5.5 to 6.5, there what happens is that you get a nutrient lockout and your plants cannot pull up the nutrients that they need. And then you get plant problems, they don't grow well and all that good stuff or not so good stuff. So anywho, I'm gonna walk you guys through my steps that I go through of cleaning this guy, which I do about once a month, once every two months or so. And uh, just an example of how to check the pH. So. Stick around and I'll check you on the other side. So just gonna lay that down there. We are going to unplug the pump from the back. All right, and just lift the basin up and then take it over to the sink. You do see a bit of algae and I saw algae growing the other day. I cleaned it a bit, but obviously not very thoroughly. So I just wiped it down. So I am gonna go ahead and take this, these guys out. Um, and get into these crevices because algae is very detrimental to your uh, plant growth when you're growing hydroponically. And, uh, and I knew better when I was setting up this system because I didn't, I make, I'm growing peppers and tomatoes. So I wanted to keep these two clear and I didn't have my covers at the time which cover up those uh, slots so that you don't get algae like I'm getting. And um, I just, you know, kind of brushed it off and didn't do it as quickly as I thought. And um, we're getting some algae growth. Luckily, I caught it quickly and soon. Um, we're able to clean this off again with the uh, water and vinegar mix. Um, I may take this guy off just to be, just to be safe, just to get, get all that, um, make sure that there's no algae in the pump because I could clean it all out and then could just be pumping algae back in there. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's go ahead and that in there. Make sure that you try to keep this as far away from the water as possible. I know it's very challenging because it's such a short line. So rinse it out and go, go ahead and empty it. See a little bit of um, root residue in there. So the water's a little cloudy. You can see a few little root fragments. I don't know if you can see that. There's a few root flat fragments in there, which is fine, but I guess the, the biggest thing I was concerned with was seeing much green and algae, so we're in pretty good shape. So I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, vinegar, add it into here, let it sit for about five minutes, rinse it out, thoroughly rinse it out, and then uh, get the water back in there, uh, check my pH, and adjust that if need be, and then we'll move from there. Here is your pull cool. this guy out. And here's your um, other screw. Make sure we keep that. Do not lose it. And see, you can see the algae 
can see the algae build up here. It's a little green, but even down here, it's like, you know, starting to get a little brown in there in the pump. A little bit of gunk, nothing horrible, nothing unmanageable, but I'm glad we took it off so we can get it fixed before it gets too bad. So I just let it sit in there for about a good five minutes or so, just letting all the residue and everything come up out of there. You can even see it. I'll change the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at. See little bits of uh, dark roots and residue in there that just needs to kind of come out. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but there you go. There we go. All right, so you just clean all that out so it doesn't clog your pump. And again, you wanna do this at least, at least once every month or two months or so, just to stay on top of things. I think this is about, I'm at the month and a half mark, so um, not too bad. So I, again, I saw a little bit of that algae and I started seeing a few plant problems and that was my trigger. Take a look and clean, get things nice and cleaned out. So this guy, oh nice, it suctions, <laughs> suctions to the bottom. So you can see here, looks like that algae has gone away. It, like, it's, like I said, when it's still pretty, pretty new, it rinses off fairly easily. These were kind of slimy and gross. So I've got that vinegar mixture in there, just letting it kill whatever else is in here. Just more little root gunk that's just sitting down in there. It easily comes off with your fingers. Just if you let it go a little longer, you might need a sponge. But um, this will eat it up nicely. So I usually get like a, a toothpick and ball up the paper towel and just clean inside there just to get the rest of the residual debris and algae out because you can when algae is pretty new it'll, it'll rinse pretty easily but then you also get caked up uh, calcium deposits and other things that make it very hard to clean out the older it gets so the minute I see it I try to clean it so it's looking pretty good now that you've rinsed everything out thoroughly, I rinse this out about a good three times or so. I go ahead and put it back in here just to let it um, bubble through the system, just to make sure that all the water's out. I'm still seeing a few little flakes of uh, roots in there, which is not a problem. My biggest concern is to make sure I get all the vinegar out of there because vinegar will kill your um, kill plants. It kills. Um, it's supposed to kill weeds and it can be harmful to your plant so you don't want to let them sitting in there leave them sitting in there so I just run it for this runs it for about five minutes and I'll let it do for that amount of time get my top back on and get going I went on and added my frame back on just so that the water can rinse through these little drainage holes that uh, feed the um, the roots just to make sure everything is completely cleared out Okay, now before we get our plants back in here, um, we're going to go ahead and test our pH. So I'm going to do it with my meter first. Oh, look at that. See, it's going back up. It's probably, probably because I've added more water into it. Now our number is about 7, 7 13. So we'll just say around that, <clears throat> around that range. Whenever you use your pH meter, always dry it off quickly, turn it off, and make sure you always put that cap back on because there's a sensor in there that you do not want to have get damaged, that little sensor right there. So it's very, um, very sensitive. It's a sensitive sensor. <laughs> so make sure you keep the cap on to keep it nice and safe. Now, <clears throat> if you don't want to spend money on that, that was about uh, $20. I got this along with this um, TDS and EC meter. This basically tests, um, allows you to test the uh, amount of dissolved nutrients and um, hard metals in your water. So um, these two together were like $19. So it was a really good deal to get this. 
However, you don't want to spend money on that. Um, you can get this kind of like, I guess it's my way of calling it an analog <laughs> type of um, <clears throat> system. Now, it'll tell you, if you can see down here, five, a pH of 5.5 .5 to 6.5 is ideal for plant growth. Now, what that means is, is that this level of pH will make it so that the plants can absorb the amount of nutrients that it needs. Now, again, we said our reading was about 7.13 or what have you. I think as I pull it out, it even said 16. So we want to take it down, but I'm going to show you how to read the uh, pH of the water by using this little system here. So I'm going to use one of these little pipettes. And it comes with this. So this is a, I love General Hydroponics. Their kit here comes with a pH up or down, the pH reader, as well as a um, little few directions here to explain how, you, how to use it, as well as a, a gauge for you. So you basically take that off. I'm gonna add my water into here. Just fill it up about halfway or so. <clears throat> and then I'm going to get my pH tester. You only need about like a drop or two in there to see. And you're already seeing it's starting to turn kind of green-ish, <laughs> dark greenish. Shake it up. And you can test it against this, which is a little hard sometimes. Here we go. You want to keep it up against some white. Here, how about we do it on this side? And you can see <clears throat> that that's kind of greenish, right? So that's why I like my digital meter because it's a bit easier to read, but this is really cool to do with kids, if, you know, like a fun little science um, lesson. Um, but if you see, you want it to be a little bit more yellow. It's in the light green area here. So it's not very yellow, but it's, it's not too dark green, but it's a little bit of a light green, which makes sense because our reading was about in this section here, right? <clears throat> so, and uh, for this point, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're using the same pipette for the say um, the the one that you're the the up or down that you're going to use. You never want to mix the down pH with the up pH or the up pH with the down pH, right? So basically, what you want to do is, as you see, our levels. Are too base, right? We want to take it to about 5.5 to 6.5. So my thing is, is let's try to get a happy medium. So if you see that your base is green, you want to make it more acidic. So you want to take the pH down, right? Because the number's a little high, you want to take it down. I'm literally going to take like one drop of this because it will, it's such, it's such a small amount of water, you're gonna see the change almost immediately. And you see it now. So that little drip of water literally made it go extremely acidic. And this is just to show you how, you know, the coolness, you never are gonna put your pH up and down to determine how much to put back in there. I just wanted to show you how the pH up and down works, okay? And we'll do that again with my up. Again, and just like a little teeny, teeny, teeny drop. And you can see the water is already starting to balance out to a nice little yellow. It's taking all that red out, so it's becoming less and less acidic. Let me put the top on, see if I can shake it a bit. It's becoming less and less acidic. Although it's still a teeny hint of red, so it's, I'm going to gauge that it's probably about 4.5 or 5, maybe, looking at our, our meter here. So, um, but that's just, I just want, again, that's, there's no need to do it in here. I just wanted to show you how that actually works. I'll probably put one more drop so you can see the change. Oh. And this is also going to show you how sensitive it is as well. So, but look at that. So it's yellow. So this is an ideal growing pH for your plants. Now, if I made this into a little teeny cracky method, this would be perfect, but I'm just kidding. So um, anywho, so we already know that our pH level was about 7.11 to 16 or what have you. 
um, nutrients can change your pH. So let's do that first. Keep my pipettes separate. Get some nutrients in here. So I'm gonna need eight ml of nutrients. Try to get that as exact as possible. Another cool thing with kids, you know, let them do this. You know, you can teach them measurements and all that good stuff. So, 8 ml of nutrients. I'm gonna pour that in. Stir it around a bit. Okay, look at that. Now that's funny. The nutrients have altered the pH in such a way that it actually might be perfect and I may not need to do to add a pH up or down. But we'll give it a second, it's still counting. All right, now once the numbers start going back and forth, kind of like that, you know you're in, in good shape. Yeah, so it's almost hitting about six. So I'm actually happy with that um, because again, ideal growth, plant growth is between 5.5 and 6.5. I think we were right about at six. So I'm gonna keep it there. So this time around, we're not gonna need this pH up and down. <clears throat> you know, this has batteries. This guy doesn't. So if you're ever curious about your batteries and say, hmm, that's a, an odd reading, go ahead and choose this as a backup, right? So this is always a great tool. I love this because it's fast and efficient. Um, it does not pull on the battery at all. Um, and it's very accurate as you can see. So with that said, <clears throat> this guy is nice and dried. So we're gonna get things back in where they were. So there you have it. I'll check back in a couple days and just make sure everything is growing well. We'll go ahead and lower this down a bit. Not too close, All right? So that's, that's about a good amount. That might be a little high. I guarantee in another day or so that will shoot up, but I, I'm thinking about I'm gonna cut these down anyway. This is not really hot to the touch. It is warm, but it will burn the tops of your plants. So you always wanna be careful of that. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that you can continue to see great uh, gardening videos like this. I will get back onto those cooking videos very soon. But until then, here's wishing you great eats and happy gardening. And always be kind to one another. Take care.